Hi, today we're going to review the GSI Audera Pro DPOAE test module. I have already entered a patient name from the opening window and I've launched the DP module. If I select the edit patient icon, here you can see the patient name I've entered is John Smith and the patient identifier is automatically assigned by the software. There are many other demographic fields that are available, but are not required to create a patient. All Adara Pro modules open up to an acquisition screen, so you're ready to test. First, I'm going to review the test protocols that are included with every Adara Pro. To do that, I'm going to click on the gear icon up at the top and select load. Here you can see the multiple protocols that are included. If you create your own protocols, this list uh, will be much longer. So the default protocol is six frequencies from 1500 to 6000 Hertz. The default six frequency is simply a clone of that. There is a diagnostic protocol frequencies from 500 to 8000 Hertz with 13 points and another one with 17 points. There are two input-output functions, a loopback protocol for screening purposes, and a screening protocol from 2000 to 5000 Hertz. For today's training, we're gonna be using the default protocol. So I'm gonna select that and click OK. And now I'm gonna review the different parameters associated with this protocol. These are ones that you may in fact alter or customize for your own clinic. And I'm not going to cover every one, just the ones that I think that you might most often want to modify. So on the general tab, the number of sweeps is simply how many times the frequency pairs are presented to the ear. Level 1 and 2 are 6555, and that's pretty much standard in audiology. And down at the bottom, the retry is actually the number of times a block is recollected if it's been rejected due to artifact. So that's for high noise um, situations. In the frequency tab, this is where you set your starting frequency and your ending frequency and the number of points per octave that you want to test. In the case of the default protocol, we're testing at 2.5 frequencies per octave, which results in a six frequency test. The ratio F2 to F1 is standard 1.22, and right at the bottom is the presentation of frequencies, whether you want them to run from low frequency to high frequency or high frequency to low. All the default GSI protocols run from high to low frequency. I'm going to skip the advanced tab and uh, move on to the stopping tab. Here's where um, you may quicken or make a test protocol faster by enabling some of these um, stopping criteria. So you can uh, select a frequency to stop, so not continue averaging or collecting, uh, if it's past your criteria. If you want a protocol to stop altogether, you can do that on an overall pass, which would mean if you have three out of four frequencies to pass and the first three pass, then the test would stop. If the first two refer, the test would stop if you select on no chance to pass. If you want to test every frequency, no matter what the result, then you would not enable either one of these um, stopping criteria. And then last, are the passing criteria and the normative data. So the passing criteria by default is setting uh, the signal to noise ratio to 6 dB with a minimum amplitude of negative five. 70% of the frequencies are going to be required uh, to pass in order to get an overall pass. And those are the default, you certainly can change those. And then last are the normative data. There are some uh, three normative data sets. You can see these by um, selecting the load button 
the top one, uh, Boys Town National Research Hospital, are the same norms that are included with the GSI CORTI and some of the older GSI devices like the GSI 60 and 70 and a couple of others. We don't want to make any changes, so I'm going to select no. So that's where you access the different norms. Okay, so those are the default per parameters. So what I'm going to do now is run a test in a test cavity. So in the test screen, the results are going to appear in the large graph. And um, the first thing that will happen is a probe check and uh, an adjustment to the um, calibration values associated with the test cavity. So I'm going to go ahead and press start. It's going to estimate the noise, which is that bottom line. And then these are the adjustments to the uh, correction values. And then the test is going to proceed. Because I'm in a cavity, a lot of those, your data points, are going to be quite low, well below negative 10. I'm talking, so we may pick up some noise, but the test is proceeding. This is the right ear, so you see the triangles uh, in red, so those are indicating uh, the results in the right ear. In the middle of the screen is the spectrum, and what that is going to show you is the noise and the DP. And because I'm in a cavity, the DP is very, very small. So the DP is indicated by an arrow, an up arrow. And then the other lines around it is the noise in adjacent frequencies. The level area is the level of your um, L1 and L2, which should be fairly close to 6555 as set in the protocol. Each individual data point data is above the level area, so if I select a frequency, um, you can see what the um, levels, the DP, the noise um, floor, and the SNR is going to be. And then on the upper right corner is the overall result. So this is the acquisition screen. So what I'm going to do now is navigate to the display screen, which is where you would go if you were going to print a report. And that is the icon that kind of looks like a, a graph. So I'm going to select that. And here you can see the screen has changed. And on this screen, I have my test cavity results showing on the for the right ear. And I actually tested uh, myself twice. Um, in the left ear. So I'm going to show you those results. I selected the ear and now I'm selecting the results to open. This was test one and the second test. So if you look on the left ear, the left responses are blue squares. The dashed line is actually a second recording. So you can display more than one OAE on the same graph and it will appear as a dashed line. For display settings you want to select the computer screen and um, the standard deviation relates to the noise levels. So the light green area on your graph is the one standard deviation. The dark green is the actual noise. So if I don't care to see the standard deviation I'm going to select standard deviation to know. My access will show you the 40 dB as the, as the high, negative 20 as the low. I could change that maybe to 30 if I wanted and apply that so it'll adjust my, my graph a little bit. If I want to see the history traces or not, that's a toggle on or off. And the same with the normative data. If you want normative data on or normative data off. I can show you what that looks like. That is the um, normative data for young normal hearing adults. Now to print a report, I'm going to select the print icon and that's going to automatically give me some choices. Right ear and left ear, two per row, is most commonly what you're going to be printing. So you want two per row so the right and left ear 
OAEs are going to print side by side on your report. History files means that dashed line is going to appear and the data table are the specific numerical data for each data point. And then passing status would be whether or not you want the pass or refer result to appear in the report. So I'm going to show you some. I don't have print preview for DPOAE, so I'm going to show you some previously saved report. So if you have not selected pass for your report and you select print, this is what the report is going to look like. So you have your right and your left ear side by side, and here's the numerical data that you'll see, your L1, L2, um, your um, <clears throat> DPs, your noise, and your signal to noise ratio. So pretty much standard, as well as your F1s and F2s. If you have selected pass to show in your report, the only difference will be pass or refer will show at the bottom of your um, report window. So that would be the only difference, and that would be certainly up to you. And again, you would select that in your um, print settings here for passing status. Thank you so much for tuning in. That's it for today, and look for additional trainings on the GSI Audera Pro. Thank you.